Hey, Ryan here, set the base triathlon.com. We are a go. We are going to talk about 70.3 Michigan. I'll preface it. Um, I'm not doing the event personally, but I have athletes doing it. I've created uh, training plans for it and other things for it. So I always like to go over the course and kind of know what I'm preparing either athletes for or plans for or anything like that. So this is just part of my normal kind of run through course anyway. Now I've started recording them and putting them on Facebook and then later putting them on YouTube and stuff. So if you're seeing this now or later, uh, welcome to the show. We're going to talk about 70.3 Michigan. We're going to talk about the run course in particular. I've already done the swim and the bike. Uh, I think we're going to talk a few other things, probably like the weather, uh, maybe places to stay. It just kind of depends. Uh, at the time of this recording, we're about a month out from the race, September 12th, and I'm making this on August 18th. So if you don't have a place to stay, it might be a little bit late to be looking for that. But for future reference, it might be kind of good to kind of know that kind of stuff. But anyway, we're going to jump into the run course. So I always like to go to the event website, webpage they've got for it, uh, 70.3 Michigan website, hit the course section, and then hit the run map. And there you have it, the glorious run course and glorious turn-by-turn -turn directions and the glorious elevation profile, which... It's interesting because you always always like to kind of look, you know, they've started putting its uh, description of the course, you know, swims on the lake, the bike is rolling, and the run is rolling. But it's interesting because total gain of 258 feet, I wouldn't exactly call that a killer or rolling necessarily. I mean, there's a few little ups and downs, ups and downs, but overall, I mean, you're not really gaining that much. So maybe you're kind of going uphill just for uh, just a little bit. I mean... Maybe like a half a mile, a little bit of an incline, but I mean, when you go to five from, you know, 580 to maybe 600 feet, you know, you're only gaining 20 feet. Um, it's going to be a slow, gradual increase, so it's not going to be a killer or anything like that. So it's kind of interesting just kind of look at their relation profile. So I always uh, click this, and I had this, and I always like to download it and save it for future reference. It's also going to be in the athlete guide, so um, you can find it on there as well. Um, print the athlete guide out you'll have it there as well so notice it is two loops and it is around this little spot here in betsy lake now hopefully uh i've got my comment section up hopefully i'm pronouncing that right you never know these days um where you go and what you do and what the names are but this is where the transition is so your swim is going to be in this little frankfurt harbor now i did usat nationals out in the and they kind of had this little harbor situation where it has man-made kind of protection from the water. And let me tell you what, I did the Olympic on Saturday and the wind wasn't bad. I did the sprint on Sunday and it was a little bit windy. You go look out into the lake and you could see some waves and stuff. So it would be interesting, but we had this kind of the man-made little barriers here and it totally protected us from any kind of waves, any kind of wake or anything from the, the larger lake area. So I think for the swim, you know, if you've watched my uh, critique of the swim, I think you'll find that this one's going to be nice with this little protector harbor. But anyway, so transitions up here. You're basically just running around the lake. Look at the course map, look at the title. You're doing two loops. So you're coming out all the way back here, all the way out. And this is going to be your turnaround. So it's kind of nice. You don't have to run all the way back near the finish line and then turn around. So you'll get kind of close, but you won't be there. You know, you'll be you know, uh, two, three miles out or something like that. So it's uh, nothing, well, about a mile out um, when you do the, the turnaround. So that's kind of nice. I always, it's it's always kind of a mental struggle if you're running right by the finish line and doing a turnaround and then coming back and you can see it, you're like, oh, I'm so close. I could just run over there and be finished with it all uh, at six or seven miles. But um, fortunately, that's not the case. We're doing the, the full 13.1 miles, but this one's nice. A little bit away from the finish line area, so you don't have to quite necessarily sweat it and worry about it. You don't have to hear the announcers, all that kind of fun stuff. So you don't have to worry as much about that. So this is the course. So basically, you're running out here around Betsy Bay, and you're doing a little turnaround. You're running back, turn around, come out, loop back, then come out, and you're finished. So it's nothing crazy. Turn by turn directions. Now, you know, take them with a grain of salt. Sometimes they have to change the course up a little bit. You know, maybe there's construction, maybe there's something going on, a road's closed or something. So take the the, the road turn by turn with a grain of salt. Um, sometimes they're accurate and sometimes they change the course and don't change turn by turn. So don't be in the choice about it. Uh, but uh, I do like the elevation profile. They just give you an idea. Now there's 258 feet. You could go to like my, my run. You can go to probably Garmin and see the runs. There's probably people that have done this course. You can see real live their Garmin information on as far as the elevation goes. 
give you a good idea, you know, and, and, and the groups, there's locals that'll tell you, oh, no, this is accurate. I got 500 feet or somebody else will say, I got 200 feet. Um, you know, they go out there and they measure it with the device, the GPS device, and this is what they go with. And, you know, there could be so many variations. We can have 35, 3,000, 2,500 athletes race this course, and you're going to have probably 2,000, 2,500 different elevation profiles for this course. It's just GPS, everybody wants to think it's exact and precise, and it, it's good to have, but it is not going to be precise. I think it's precise up to like a two to three foot radius. So you got to take with a grain of salt what this elevation profile says. But I think it gives you at least a good idea of what you're looking at as far as the ups and downs of the run course. So it's always good to know that. What I also like to do is check it out on Google Maps. So basically what you're doing is you're running on this trail system, which seems kind of nice. So you kind of run out the waterfront parkway here or waterfront drive and run out and you hit the trail system so i, I kind of like this personally when you're running on trail systems um yeah once you get out you're gonna have like an outback kind of situation going on but it just helps when you're not on the open roads you don't have to mess with that they can sit up uh, aid stations easier they can serve both sides of the road uh, it's just a, a nicer situation to be kind of off the beaten path on a trail system so you're not hurried um, it's not that big of a deal. You don't feel stressed out because you're running with cars or anything like that. So it's kind of nice to be able to get out here and get on the trail system. The other thing I, I like to find interesting is if you zoom in, you can see there's a little bit of tree cover at the beginning. I mean, you run through here a little bit, you're going to have a little bit of, of health from the trees. Now if that sun is coming straight down, if you're around the noon marker, um, you're probably not going to be able to uh, hide much from the sun. So just be mindful of that. Um, you know, sunscreen, that type of thing, just to make sure that you're uh, covered. If it's uh, full sun on that day, we'll go over the weather a little bit, kind of what to expect. Uh, I wouldn't imagine, I mean, you look at the, the average temp for the race of 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you know, it could be, this year's been an off year. You could get out there and it'd be 90 degrees on, you know, September 12th and, um, you know, you could bake out there. So you never know. But I'd just like to point out, when you're going through here, it does not look like you're going to get much coverage from trees. Now, there's some sections where it's got it lined up, but you know, you go over this bridge, you're going to be exposed very much the whole time. So if this is hot, it's going to be uncomfortable. But you hop off the trail and you hit uh, Frankfurt Avenue. You come up here to the Center Street, and you come in here and you do the little turnaround, kind of loop around. And then you come back. So you're going to loop around this kind of little waterfront park area and then loop around run back. So looking at this, you know, you might have a little bit of coverage on this little furnace avenue, you know, depending on where the trees are at. But I mean, I want to say a bulk majority of this course, you're not going to have much cover as far as from the sun goes. Now, if it's windy or something like that, you know, some of these trees will help you out and, and you know, the trees kind of enclose this area, but if you got a breeze coming in kind of across this little lake here, you know, you're going to feel that breeze a little bit. Um, but, or conversely, if it's hot and kind of muggy, you're not going to get a breeze to kind of blow that air out. So it could be a little stagnant in there because you have some tree coverage on the outside kind of closing in. So just be aware of that, that, you know, you're probably going to be mostly exposed to the elements out here. So like you said, I would highly recommend sunscreen. Um, just make sure that you're well hydrated and, and you've got your nutrition under control on the bike. So you get out there, you can do that run, and it's not a problem. I don't see it being that draining as far as the elevation profile goes. You're going to have some little rolling hills, kind of some up and downs or whatever, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's just going to totally wipe you out. It's not going to be a steep climb of 100 feet in, you know, a quarter of a mile or anything like that. Nothing crazy. There are some little steep little sections here. You just run up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be that technical and challenging. Uh, we did go over the bike course and, you know, just kind of revisiting that one a little bit. Uh, we'll download the PDF. We'll look at the transition or the uh, elevation profile. So about 1,100 feet of gain. So really, I like to save that one too. Really, I don't think you're going to be play the, bar, the bike smart. There will be sections where you can put your head down and hit your power goals that you want and you can go out there and just kind of wouldn't necessarily hammer it, but I think you got a little bit of leeway, especially if the weather's nice. If it's uh, cool temperatures and you're not profusely sweating and losing a lot of, of hydration and nutrition, uh, and you're not losing a lot of energy, I think this run plays well into having a nice solid run in the right conditions. If it's hot, uh, be careful. 
Um, if it stays in, you know, the average temperatures they're calling out for, you know, 67 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for kind of the average temperature, uh, I think this is going to be a nice course to get a good solid run time in. Um, so I think you could probably play if, the, if everything's, you know, the weather's playing nicely and it's not hot and it's not overly humid. You can go out there and you can hit that bite section pretty good, be pretty solid and aggressive on it, and then come out here and do the run and, and take the first half a little bit, you know, a little bit dialed back. And just kind of feel it out. And then on that second loop, if you're feeling good, you know, that's time to kind of attack it a little bit and, and, and see what you can do out there. So I think the keys are, like I said, um, just making sure you're hydrated off the bike. Um, if the cool temperatures stay true, then it's not going to be that much of a problem. Uh, just make sure that you're well rested off the bike. So if you want to kind of be aggressive on the run, you could. Um, and just make sure that you're prepared. I think you're going to be exposed to the elements of the sun. If it rains, you're going to be rained on. There's really no coverage. Um, you're just out there. So just be, be ready for that and be prepared. Um, the last thing you want to do is if you're you're not feeling well in that last loop and you're getting beat down by the sun, if you got a sunburn going on, and it's just not very fun to be sunburnt and trying to get done with a race. I've uh, been there, done that. And, you know, if you're out there for six, seven or eight hours, that's a long day to be out and drink sunlight. So that's kind of my, pick, my takes on this. I didn't see any comments on that. I mean, it's really nothing too wild and crazy. Um, like I said, I mean, you look at this elevation profile, I don't really think it's that much of a challenge at 260 feet of elevation gain. If you want to check that elevation, you can go to, you know, map my run or anything like that and kind of map it out or anything. But I also like to go to Google Maps to kind of check out the terrain and just to see if you get any kind of like, you know, trees or anything kind of covering the run or anything like that. And I don't really see much of that. I see sections where you can have some coverage, but I think you're going to be kind of exposed. If it's windy, you're going to get hit by the wind. If it's not windy, then it's probably going to be a little bit stagnant in here kind of off the lake. So just be ready for that. That's basically it, you know. Um, like I said, if you got any questions, if you think this was great and perfect, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you see this on YouTube, give it a thumbs up as well. Subscribe on there. Uh, if you think I need to add something on there, put it in the comments. I always like to improve my videos. If you think it was horrible, let me know if I talk too fast, talk too slow, whatever you think the uh, whatever you think I could do to improve this to make it uh, very helpful and accessible, and so it's informative and everybody gets the most they can out of it. So with that. We're going to wrap up this video talking about 70.3 Michigan run course. And hopefully you guys are all getting ready, you're getting prepared, and happy training, and we'll see you out there on race day.